trying to catch you guys up, get you guys on track for the right planting seasons. We planted all these gardens late because that's when the program started. But now we have the opportunity to get back to planting for the fall winter garden on time. And we are gonna kind of show you now how to best use the space that you guys have. So this is uh, 32 square feet. This is a four by eight box like what you guys have here. Um, all of your irrigation is off on an end. We try not to put the irrigation off in the middle. So what we're gonna do is kind of show you guys how to arrange these gardens so that you can uh, kind of learn some square foot gardening techniques a little bit. Um, so for this list, what we have is broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, uh, Romanesco, which is also a uh, technically a cauliflower, but it's yeah, it looks it looks like a drill bit kind of when it comes out. Very cool plant, uh, but it's not a continuous producer. You get one head and it's done. Uh, but it is cool. It's a cool thing to grow. Um, kale, kohlrabi, which I don't know if you guys have seen kohlrabi. It's like a, it looks like a beet that grows above ground. Really awesome, super crunchy. The greens are edible. Uh, mustard greens, Swiss chard, two types of onions, arugula, all of your lettuce varieties, so redheads and um, everything for your yeah, salad mixes. And then we have our herbs, which if you didn't already plant herbs, you can really plant them kind of any time. Oregano, thyme, rosemary, sage. And then for seeds, the only thing we're gonna do this time is uh, sugar snap peas, peas varieties. Onions and garlic, um, you wanna plant those as far away from the irrigation as you can. Okay, you wanna put them down on the far end. Uh, the reason being is they cross the seasons. So you plant them this month. They're not gonna finish until May of next year, okay? Everything else that we're planting, broccoli, cauliflower, uh, cabbage, they're gonna be done by March. In March, we're gonna do this again. We're gonna come and we're gonna take out the fall plants, winter plants, and we're gonna be planting April 1st-ish. Gonna watch the seasons and see how cold it gets, and maybe March, maybe April. We're gonna be planting tomatoes, peppers, zucchini, squash, all that stuff again. But onions and garlic are gonna stay. So when they stay, they also need to dry out. You need to let them dry out. They can't get water, like you're gonna heavily water your tomatoes starting April 1st when you plant them. You can't have water on onions. So you wanna plant your onions in a place where you can easily pull that irrigation away, where you know the head, you can't move the head. So this head's gonna be there. So you don't wanna plant your onions and garlic all around this head where you're gonna have water coming all the time. So we're gonna put uh, I'm just gonna write it down at the bottom. Onions. Okay, so if you guys are ordering onions, one six pack of these onions is gonna have probably 10 onions in each cell of the six pack. You plant onions every four inches. Okay, so you're probably only gonna need a six pack of onions, maybe two six packs if you really like them and you want to use the, the whole end here for onions, okay? Because what you do is, and we'll show you guys, each little cell of the six pack, you take it out, you soak it, and you can actually pull each of the little onions apart and plant them every four inches. If you plant that whole six pack, that one little cell all together, you're never going to get a bulb much in the same way as people who planted carrots and didn't thin carrots. They got carrots that were about that big because all of those carrots are battling for position. They're fighting for nutrients. They can't really form enough room to make that carrot. So you want to plant them four inches apart. We will show you how to better manage the irrigation to do that when the time comes. Oregano and thyme and rosemary, perennial herbs. We already kind of planted them down in this area too it's okay to put your onions right in between those things because those, those plants do all right. They're already gonna have a year's worth of time having water consistently. So they won't, when you pull the water off the onions, you're not gonna kill those herbs. It's a cool thing to put in together. Uh, onions also are a sort of pest deterrent, okay? Not a lot of bugs eat onions and onion greens. They just don't like the flavor. So they, they hang out, they, they don't, 
it's kind of a nice little pest deterrent. People use onions sometimes around a whole garden to keep pests away. So for the rest of these, um, you know, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, kale, they're gonna take that full square foot. There's not gonna really be much room in between those. So if you, you know, I'm not gonna draw the whole thing out because I don't know if you guys really like broccoli, maybe you're only gonna do broccoli starts. In that case, you know, one of those six packs is this whole six square feet. You know, so one six pack of broccoli, one six pack of cauliflower, one six pack of kale. Yeah, your box is filling up quick. You know, so be aware. Lettuce is a little bit different. You can do four heads of lettuce in a square foot. You'll see it start to open up. You'll see, it, you'll see the little buds on the broccoli start to open up. And before they open up, you hack that head of broccoli, you take it home and you eat it. Now what you get is all these leaves have big shoots on them. So you end up getting side shoots. If you have a healthy broccoli plant, you're gonna get the main head and probably another head, head and a half, maybe even two heads of broccoli in side shoots from December to March. So it's a good plant to keep watching and harvesting from continuously. Uh, and that's in one square foot. Kale, as long as you keep harvesting from the outer leaves and you leave this nice inner growth, you can get kale trees taller than you. Uh, and that's a cool way, it's a continuous producer. Another thing you can keep in your garden for a long period of time. Snap peas. Um, so our trellises are they're about, they're about 18 inches around, you know, so you can put them on a square foot or you can take almost four square feet with them. They have little connections with the ground about every six inches. So if you got um, a pack of peas, you can put two peas in, around every little uh, support for these trellises and they're going to grow to the size of the trellis or bigger. So, you know, keep that in mind. One, one package of peas will do you. They're gonna grow up. They're probably going to take the winter to grow big and tall. And then around January, February, really, they flower and they form peas. And so right at the end of the process, you go out there and you're gonna have 100 peas on one of these things. Um, and they're delicious. They're really a good one to grow. You know, keep, keep in mind how much of each thing you're actually going to want to do and how much space you have in your box left over with, when you have your perennial herbs and everything. It really should be, the order should be considerably less than what they were for this last season. Yeah, it is the time to be planting these things. Uh, between now and, I oh, want the latest first week in November, I've planted these things as late as Thanksgiving. But you're really running the risk of hitting an early frost in December. These young plants, if they haven't had a chance to grow roots and grow big leaves, they're more susceptible to dying in that, or that first frost, which is a pain. You know, you bought all these things, you want them to live. So it is a, a tough decision to make to end your crops. But it is the time to be making those decisions. So a couple things uh, with the zucchini. Yep. Uh, should we have been trimming it in any kind of way or do you just Not let it really. go? I let it go. I try to plant them instead of planting it right, you know, like that. I'll show you something. It's still alive. You can take and make some space. You could chop all these back and you're still going to get a lot more room. Well, you, so as you long can as cut it's, them off. It's, it's yeah. Fine. Yeah, you can, you can cut some back. As, generally, the general rule is like don't take more than a third, a third of the foliage at once okay. from any plant if you want it to keep going. So, I mean, this thing is totally movable from the, that spot where the roots are. When you start to see it branch out, you want to do what those two did and train them outside the box if you're working with the box so you're not using space in here. This one was just taking up a huge section. Got it. So, go ahead and slide it off, get it out of the box. Basil is, a, is an annual. It's not going to make it through the winter. Uh, but, uh, like, rosemary, like this, um, oregano, this will make it. Okay. You just let it stay through the winter. Uh, if you had rosemary or thyme, that stays, but basil doesn't do it. Cool. All right. All right. So yeah, all this. I mean, it's totally up to you 
what you want to leave in this box. My crew's going to be here on Sunday. We're going to yeah. do the heavy lifting stuff for you. So you're just here to harvest what you can get yeah. out of it today. I think we'll take that basil plant in the back like you did over there, right? Yeah. Just kind of take it home. And yeah, just that. get a good root ball this, with it and give it plenty of water and it, put it in a south-facing window uh, somewhere. And good for a if you keep it inside, it'll last you another I month or two. And I put it in a cup on my cool. desk. Thanks. Yeah. Hi, my name is Clemence and I'm an employee here at eBay. Having a garden at work is really fun. You can spend some time away from the computer and um, it's really enjoyable to be outside and at the end of the day eat your uh, stuff, the stuff you've grown. So I really enjoyed having a garden here at eBay. I have learned a lot that I didn't know before and I'm extending that to things that I grow around the house, you know, just, you know, vegetables and kale and plants and some things that I've salvaged from around here, you know, some kale that I rescued from out there and I'm learning how to grow my own food and it's awesome. I love plants and I love gardening so I'm really enjoying it and the Start Organic guys have been super helpful. Mm -hmm.